In this part, we'll be focusing on how we can fade to black whenever we need to load a new scene and then fade to clear again when the scene is done loading. Um, and it's very simple to do this actually. We just need to cover our screen in black pixels and then we need to fade them out slowly by changing the alpha value. So to be able to do this, we need to add a new game object by clicking create and then go to create empty because we just need an empty object. And this object is going to be named overlay, so just click on it and write overlay. When you've done that, you need to add a new component, and that component is a GUI texture. So just write GUI and then go to GUI texture. When you've done that, you need to set the color. First of all, we need to fade from black. You can also pick an other color if you want that, but I'm just going to go with black, so click on the color bar here and go all the way to black. Also need to set a texture here. You can either create your own pixel or something and just add that. Um, but if you go in Unity 5 at least, if you click on the texture here, there is this default one and this one would work just fine. We also need to cover the whole screen. And basically we can also do that from code and we're going to do that from code. But just to be sure, we're going to cover the whole screen right away. So take the scale and change it to 2 in the X and Y axis here. So right now you have the main menu in the middle of the screen and that's not what you want. So if you have any UI that you need to hide, well then you need to go to your script and disable it until that this, uh, scene is done loading. So right now I'm not gonna uh, disable this because it's only for debugging and in this example, but I'm just gonna go to the text and then I'm gonna change the color to black so that I can't see it until the scene is done loading. So what we are actually going to do from our script is that we're going to access this overlay from our script and then we're going to go to the color and we're going to change the alpha value so that it slowly fades uh, into the screen like this. So we start from totally black and then we slowly fade over so that it's going to look very smooth so we get a smooth transition, uh, transition from uh, one scene to another. So to access this overlay we actually need to go to our a level handler and we need to make a public UI texture there we go and we're just gonna name this overlay there we go okay so now that we have this overlay we need to access it from our script so go back into unity and then find your uh, level handler and drag the overlay over here so that you have a reference to the UI texture that is sitting on the game object here. Because now we can access this UI texture here and change the alpha from our script. When we start our scene we would like to disable it uh, just like this so that we can actually see what's going on here. So go back into your script and go to the awake function because whenever we start our game we want to set the size of this UI texture so that it takes up the whole screen. So we're gonna say void awake and we're gonna write uh, overlay dot pixel insert and we're gonna make a new rectangle and it's gonna start in 0, 0.0 and it's gonna be screen dot width and screen dot height. So what this does, no matter what resolution you're going to have, this one is going to cover the whole screen. So our pixels are going to cover the whole screen. So the size we just changed out there doesn't really do anything. But in here we're going to set the real size so that we're sure that our fade to black is going to cover everything. Underneath here we need to fade to clear. So we need to make some code so that our screen actually starts fading. And we can do that by creating a coroutine. So down here under everything we need to make a uh, I enumerator. So make a private I enumerator and this is what a coroutine needs so fade to clear. So what is a coroutine? Well a coroutine is something that can run um, simultaneously with other things. It's not like a thread but you can do something and then you can return and then you can continue from the point where you left off so we can keep 
uh, running our coroutine at the same time as we could run our update loop and everything. So instead of putting this functionality in an if statement inside our update, we can actually just call it and Unity will keep calling this until we are done fading out, basically. So first of all, we need to make sure that our um, layout uh, overlay is shown. So we need to say overlay that game object that set active true. So now we are show, uh, showing our game object on the screen so that it's it's black when we load the new scene because awake here is called as the first function whenever we start a new scene so when we start the scene we want to make it black so that we can fade into it so down here we're gonna say uh, overlay dot color just to make sure that it's black equals color dot black so when we do this, if we just fade it out in the scene before or we haven't set the color correctly, well then we're sure that it's going to be black right away. So if we save this. Then we also need to set a fade time because we want to be able to um, set the time ourselves so we can manipulate with it so we can decide if it's going to fade fast out or slow out or what we want to do. So up here under our overlay we're going to write public float fade time. And this fade time is going to be the amount of seconds it takes uh, from our overlay to fade from black to clear. When we've done that, we need to calculate the rate because we need to calculate in seconds. So we're going to write float rate equals 1.0 divided by fade time. Um, so we can fade over an X amount of seconds. Then we're going to make our progress because we need to track how far we have come and it's going to be 0, 0.0. So when we're done fading, this progress is going to be 1 and we're going to say start at 0, 0.0. So we're going to make a while loop. And as long as our progress is less than um, 1.0, then we're going to try to fade out our texture. So we're going to say GUI texture, or sorry, overlay dot color equals color dot loop and we're gonna fade from color dot black to color dot clear and progress we're gonna use the progress as a reference so what this does is that it changes our color the overlay dot color overlay dot color is actually the color right here on our overlay that this color here and we're gonna take that uh, color um, and we're gonna loop it from color dot black to the color dot clear and we're gonna use the progress as uh, progression so that we can see how far we've come so we change it all the time and then we look at it here to see if we're done fading and then down here we're gonna say progress plus equals rate multiplied by time dot delta time so that we add the delta time to make sure that this is frame rate independent and the rate we just calculated up here and by doing this we move something we, we faded the same amount over time on every single computer or device that we export this to and a coroutine needs to return something uh, because it's an i enumerator and I'm just, just gonna yield return null because then not all code paths returns value. When we're done fading, just to make sure that we have a totally clear picture, I'm gonna say uh, overlay dot color equals color dot clear. And then down here, I'm gonna say UI texture, which is my overlay dot game object dot set active false so that I hide it again so that when I'm done fading I don't want to show the game object on my screen anymore so now we have our fade to clear which means that we can actually fade to clear up here in our uh, awake function and we can simply do that by saying start coroutine fade to clear here we go so now we are actually fading to clear so let's save this jump back into unity and click on our label handler and our fade time could be two seconds for example so let's test if this works 
we play our game, it comes black, and then it fades in. And this is only for our main, main menu, so we would need to reload our menu here to get the fade to black because we haven't set this up in uh, our other scenes yet. So you can see if I go to another one, it just goes like this. So we need to set this up in our other scenes, and the easiest way to do this is by clicking our prefab, replacing our level handler, and take the overlay and add down here as well. So then we need to go to our scene one, save the scene, look at our, oh, um, take our prefab here, instantiate it, click on the level handler and make sure that it has a reference to the overlay. And we need to do the exact same thing in our level two, save, go to prefabs, add the overlay and add it to the level handler here. So if we play our game now, level 2 should also be fading, and as you can see it's also fading. We still have the level 2 written here on, on the screen, so to fix that we also need to click on the status canvas, go to text, and make it black as the other one, and we need to do the exact same thing for, um, sorry, for level 1. And as I said before, this is not the way of handling it, you need to hide it from your game, um, but this is simply just for debugging, so I'm not gonna uh, use my time on, on hiding this. Yes. Okay, so now we have something fade from black to clear, but we also need to fade to black, so that when we change level it fades into black and then it goes back again. So, we need to go back into our script. And in here we actually may need to make the exact same function as we did before. We just need to fade the other way around. So basically you can take this whole function and copy it and then paste it underneath and then rename it to fade to black. And if you haven't guessed it yet, I'm going to show you that you need to take color black and change it around with color.clear. So we fade from clear to black instead. And the overlay color is going to be set to clear from the beginning. Um, and then we also need to change some things around down here. We're going to set the color to black from the beginning. Um, and I'm not actually not going to set it active to false. Okay. So what I did here was to change around the clear and the black color. Up here I made sure that it starts at a clear color. And down here I made sure that it ends on a black color. So we also need to load a new level whenever we are faded to black because we have completed our level in our game and then we want to fade to black and when we are done fading to black we need to load our new level. And to do that we actually need to give this fade to black a method so that we can actually load the level after we are done fading. So we can put up some booleans and stuff and look at that all the time and load our level when we're done with this but the easiest way is to um, just give this um, responsibility to the fade to black i enumerator um, coroutine so that the fade to black know when it needs to call the next function and because we created these different functions up here load level next level reload level and load specific well then we don't know which kind one of them we need to use whenever we call fade to black so we need to make sure that we can give in a function here as a parameter and call that specific function. So if I load uh, load specific level, well then fade to black is going to call load specific level. And if I would call load next level, then fade to black would call next level. So to make sure that we can do this, we need to create an action here. And if this doesn't work, then right click on it, click resolve and click using system. And this just adds using system up here in your um, in your namespaces, and if you haven't, uh, if you don't have your uh, Visual Studio, then just write using system up here, and you should be able to access action action. So up here in the parameter, after you've written action, you just write level method, and when you've done that, then you just call your level method like this. So this calls the method. So if I call it from 
uh, reload level, then it's going to fade to black and reload level. But we need to handle this a little differently because in reload level, we need to tell it to start the coroutine. So we're going to say start coroutine, fade to black, and then we need to give fade to black which kind of method it needs to call. And this one is going to reload the level, so we need to tell fade to black. Whenever we fade to black, we need to reload the exact same level as we're in. And we can do that through a lambda expression by making two parentheses and then making equal larger than. And then we can write application dot load level application dot loaded level. So this line starts the fade to black coroutine and tells the fade to black coroutine that it needs to take in the function called load level and load the same level so whenever fade to black is done running it's gonna call this method here and this method it's gonna be equal to this expression I just gave it in here so we can delete this then we also have load specific and we're gonna do the exact same thing just copy paste this one from load level and then instead of taking the loaded level then we're gonna give it the index here and you can copy it and go to load specific underneath and then instead of the index you need to load right name so this one calls fade to black fades the screen to black and loads the level by index this one calls fade to black and loads the level by name then we have load next level here and this is also going to be almost the same, just copy paste this coroutine, paste it here, and then copy paste this and paste it in here so that you load the next level. So what's happening here is whenever our player hits the next, for example, it goes to the level handler and it's going to call the load next level function. Then we're going to check if we can load the next level. Then we're going to start the coroutine to fade to black and the fade to black coroutine needs a function that it needs to call after it's done fading. When it's done fading, it's going to tell, uh, take this function here called application.loadLevel which loads the level and it's going to load the exact same level or the next level for example, in this case the next level. So this level method here is equal to application.load level plus one. So when it's done fading, it's gonna call this function. I hope this makes sense and I hope it's not too complicated. But let's save and jump back into Unity. And out here we can test it. So we are already in level one. So let's play this. And it fades from black to light. And if I go into the next level, it fades to black and then it fades to clear. So you can see it gets a very much smoother transition now because it fades in and, and out like this. So this was uh, this part of the tutorial. Uh, the next part is going to be focusing on how we can play a cutscene when we load a new scene. So when we switch level, you might have some animated uh, sequences or something that you want to play. So I'm going to show you how we can take um, a, a clip or a movie that you created and load it into Unity and show it to the user. Um, as usual, if you haven't done already, please support me by buying the project or um, by becoming a Patreon. If you become a Patreon, you can get all my projects that I've ever made uh, for just $5 a month. And you can read more about it in the description below. So um, let's move on to the next part.